program. It's always a good day on Monday to speak to Kit Jiggs. Let me bring you over to the WIRP function. Now, you listen to the Federal Reserve officials. They're at pains and saying, look, we want to hike. We want to hike. We're ready to hike. But then the markets don't quite believe them. Yeah, I mean, this time last week, we must have been very close to 32% for that March meeting uh, a week ago. And then we had the Janet Yellen testimony that took us into the mid-40s. And here we are back down here again with Loretta Mester speaking. Um, tempted to say what curve, are we behind or not? But it, yeah, we're not. It's going to take quite a lot to convince markets that they're, that they're serious. Although each so, meeting will be live from now on. Right, but so what needs to happen? Is it wage growth, inflation, or is it just a little bit more clarity on what Donald Trump will do to the economy? Um, I, I think it's very easy for the FOMC, in the absence of more significant inflationary pressures, in the near term, it's very easy for them to dither. And, and that's their default position has been for long enough now. So what needs to happen for rates to go up? Frankly, rates ought to be higher than they are already. I think it's as simple as that. But what needs to happen for the Fed? Not much more. I mean, the equity market moving higher, you know, they're pretty sensitive to that. The, the dollar's not running away with it. They're pretty sensitive to that. Um, and core inflationary pressures are slowly building. So is there a mis miscommunication problem? Do you, do you think that the Fed can actually hike rates even if odds don't tell us they will? Or do uh, Fed officials actually look at our implied probability? I, I think it's, you know, it's, it's sort of boy crying wolf problem right. of, their own, of their own design, that we've been down this road before and we know that this is a Fed who, in the absence of significant inflationary pressures, thinks it's safer to wait if there's any reason to wait. But, you know, we, we, I mean, we will not just get one rate hike this year. I'm, I'm really confident in February that we will get more than one rate hike in 2017, mm -hmm. despite only having had one in 16 and one in 15. How I'm will sure. They, I'm sure. Were you <laughs> sure last year as well? <laughs> Actually, by now, I was becoming increasingly less sure. But <laughs> probably, yeah, that's the problem. Yeah, is that you, you go into the year thinking one thing and then, and then you listen to what they say. T talk to me about dollar strength. So Donald Trump has said he, he wants a weaker dollar, and yet all of his policies point to dollars stronger from here. Yeah, I mean, everybody wants a weaker currency. I'm not sure there's a big sort of line of people who think that it would help their economies to have a strong right. currency. So, um, I mean, the dollar's not that strong in the big scheme of things. Right. You know, it, it was very weak uh, before the taper tantrum back in 2012. Um, but yes, his policies are going to strengthen the dollar. If he wants to ease fiscal policy into an economy that's near full employment and has rising wage growth and rising core inflation, albeit slowly, um, then he's going to be doing things that encourage real interest rates and nominal interest rates to move higher against a backdrop where we still have quantitative easing in, uh, in Europe and Japan. Um, Kid, I love your note. It's, it's my favorite note, I have to say it. I, I know I'll get hate mail for it, but it is my favorite note. You say, today, quietly, risk on. What can change that? Uh, something I can't see right now in the sense of, you know, the, the, the danger to the risk on mood, uh, a spike higher in bond yields as opposed to this, I mean, ever so slow grind higher in bond yields, um, a reversal in equity markets, something coming out of left field in emerging markets. But yeah. right now... Something like what? non-performing roles out of China or something? Yeah, but seeing things I can't see. I mean, at the moment, the Chinese data is good. They're slowly nudging rates higher, but overall you get the sense that monetary policy is accommodative, the economy's outperforming most people's expectations. That's driving commodity prices. You know, whether it's copper with the strike um, in, in Chile, just edging higher, iron ore prices are messing around near their highs. When I sort of look through a whole list of things that after six in the morning, I can't find much scary. OK, but, but the market is expecting what from Donald Trump in terms of reflation and, and repatriation of tax? I mean, we don't have the plans yet. Could he disappoint? Um, yeah, I think we've stopped because we, can, we know what we expect and, and we're waiting to see because we're not confident enough to go further. But right. there's a general expectation of, yeah, of a corporate ca corporation tax cut and of some kind of income tax cut. Um, th those are the things I think people are, the market is confident of. And the equity market is, is priced in for a bunch of money to come home.